Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Double D Experience. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. I'm looking at my... Oh. Oh, shit. Ooh. Yeah, look at that. Ooh. So, uh, guys, Ooh. for, uh, for all the people, uh, you know, since we're an audio-based show... Dennis. Did you hear that? Yeah. Uh, Ooh. Our, our boy, the other half to the Double D Experience, has grown some muscles, and he's admiring himself in front of the camera. He's got some triceps now. When we going to the I actually do have more muscle definition in my legs because I do an hour on the elliptical every time I'm there. Oh, I'll bet, uh, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I finally learned how to <coughs> properly in, um Oh, I, thank you for reminding me. I can actually tell that story. I was going to tell that story oh, last shit, week, yeah. but we yeah. uh, we ran out of time. I totally forgot. First of all, everybody, hi. Welcome to the Double D Experience. Welcome. Uh sometimes sleepy, sometimes awake, but always worried about your friends no, and always no. and always going to go above an hour. <laughs> <laughs> no, not this time. Because every time we don't, it, it is literally like a direct correlation. Literally yeah. every time we don't, I it gets told like 20 you this, more bro. views. Every no, you were right. You were right. You were right. I don't listen to you enough. I really don't. I'm sorry, Dennis. I really don't, but I should. I know so much and, about uh, podcasts, and I've only been on one. It's just like, I, I don't know like what the You were you, a man. consumer of content before you became a producer of one, or a host of one, technically. So if anything, I should listen to you way more. Because I'm long-winded as fuck. Even my response to your question right now is way too <laughs> fucking long-winded and I won't shut the fuck up. People don't like that shit. That's half the reason I started a podcast besides like, you know, having an outlet to be myself and distance myself from the Smash community when I was more salty towards it. That's because I'm a long-winded guy. You know what I mean? So no, Same here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we both are, honestly. It's, it's really a perfect format it, for us, isn't it? But it also depends, though, like on... I always said it, like it always depends on like what we're talking about because if it's like definitely something that, you know, you and I are... What do you call it? Like you know passionate about we could go on we can go and talk about it for like literally hours i wouldn't shut the fuck up about danny yeah. phantom i'm so sorry i love danny phantom though bro it's fine one of my favorite <laughs> animes <laughs> oh i sent you that video of uh, that music uh some guys making like smash remixes for like nick all-stars like Ooh. like like nickelodeon music oh yeah yeah, yeah. i remember mm -hmm. they're so sick someone made the one like that spongebob song goes like Doo! He made a remix of that one and it fucks. Like, he, like, put, like, you know, like, bass undertones. Well, I'll send it to you later because it actually goes unironically fucking hard. But, uh, yeah, I've been going to the gym. Uh, I'm seeing a little more definition on my legs now. I learned how to properly engage my core finally because they have a trainer there who's been helping me out because I wanted him to know my long term goals. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm not trying to, like, be in the next fucking Marvel movie. <laughs> I ain't trying to be Chris Pratt right now. I just I, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to do that. I just want to tone myself, get rid of the goot. I'm just imagining though, like, like for anyone who is listening today and knows David personally, can you imagine our boy in a Chris Pratt like Guardians of the Galaxy body, like, like I would be so confused because it's like this guy has the worst posture in the world. <laughs> And somehow, like, this dude looks like as if he could break me in half. Like. I like, will would... be the first to admit I, I have the nerd neck. <laughs> I, I, I will be the first to admit it. You know the nerd neck where even if you're standing up straight, your neck just like, check that, no, Des, you just watch me, so you're like, duh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here you go. I don't have as not as much as it used to be though. My posture, as you can mm. tell, is a lot better than it was before, mainly because of my back. But um, anyway, the gym. Yeah, uh, I have a trainer there <laughs> who uh, helps me out every couple of weeks. Not like not a personal trainer I see all the time. I don't got that money. Mm. But uh, uh, yeah. So he taught me how to properly engage my core because I've been doing it wrong this whole time. Because here's the thing: like those of you who are not new to the Double D experience, or if this is the first episode you're listening to, or if you're not a personal friend of mine, whatever. Um, we, um, why, why did my brain just fart for a second? Oh, I have a herniated <laughs> disc in my back, in my lumbar, right? In the bottom, which is like right, ab right above my ass. And, uh, <laughs> So yeah, so I can't sit for too long, or I shouldn't sit for too long, so long car rides, meh, like really long car rides, I mean, but I have like back stabilization exercises, right? The thing with having a herniated disc is that I got it from playing Ring Fit Adventure because my core was so weak and I was doing exercises I shouldn't have been doing. That's what being a gamer does to you. <laughs> and uh, the thing is with having a herniated lumbar, 
I can't do any of the core exercises on the machines at the gym. None of them are okay for my back. They all involve, mm. like, some types of, like, crunching or, like, mm -hmm. bending of the bottom of the lumbar, which presses against my nerves if I, like, go too long mm -hmm. without, like, working it properly. Which becomes a vicious cycle, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's like, oh, my my lumbar went out because oh, I was doing it. Oh, my back. <laughs> <laughs> I was just waiting for the moment to say it. But, like, five uh, minutes, I was just like, I'm gonna say it. My Back. I was just like, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say. Just wait for the moment. Just wait for the moment. Oh, my back. <laughs> oh, I'm ruined. <laughs> I feel great. Calm down, Squidward. Just imagine her in her underwear. <laughs> oh no, she's high. <laughs> Oh, that's another topic that we have to talk about later on today. Oh, yes. I'll keep the gym story. Uh, I'll keep the gym story quick. Sorry for interrupting uh, you. Go ahead. Go no, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. That's okay. This is why our podcasts go like two hours and uh, <laughs> and get ten not, viewers. <laughs> not, not, not actually. Not actually. Look at the end of it. It's fine. It's fine. Which, speaking of, by the way, I want to give a huge shout out to. Um, it's funny enough that Dennis was actually late for the podcast today because he just lost track of time. It caused me to worry about my friend. I want to give a big shout out to uh, Gene Alcantara, uh, Gene Alcantara, who let us know in the comments of the last week's episode that the podcast on Spotify was a re-up of the last one. My dumbass uploaded the prior week's episode <laughs> for last week. And I, I didn't notice until a very courteous fan pointed it out. So, Gene, oh thank God. you so much. I literally would not have noticed that if it wasn't for you. And you left a comment on YouTube, too, which lets me know that you listen on one or both. So thank you so much for that, Gene. Would thank love you. to hear this while lifting. Oh, shit. Yeah, Dennis, he listens to our podcast at the gym. All right, Gene, I'm going to have to also apologize on behalf of my stupid friend here who uh, <laughs> like, you know, decided, oh, yeah, like, oh, this is totally the episode. Really, really. <laughs> Imagine how disappointed he was when he went into the gym. He's like, yes, new episode of the Double D Experience, my favorite podcast. Dude, you And probably... it just opens the exact same way as last week. Like, oh, I fucking knew you were going to say that because that's when you made the stupid Jim Crow joke. Like, to open the episode. You probably ruined his fucking lifting session that day. You know how some people just can't do the gym without their music? You, like you just torpedoed his whole gym day, like probably, like <laughs> yo, Gene, Gene. Uh, I speak on behalf of the entire uh, Double D Experience LLC Incorporated. Uh, and Corporation. I have, and yeah, I have to publicly apologize for my idiot friend who torpedoed your gym day and ruined your gains. And uh, as compensation, David will be sending you his humongous feet pics. Personally, to your email with jizz on it. <laughs> I'm not gonna jizz on my own feet. I mean, I can, but like, ugh. would you? Well, I'm gonna ask you: Would you jizz on your own feet if people would be paying money for them? No. You really wouldn't. Probably not. Damn, man! I have no shame. I would. <laughs> the dude. I, 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 I would because, like, my feet are ugly, bro. Oh my god, no they're not. Show, show me the feet. Uh, but, 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 show me the feet. I literally just like, <laughs> point, like just raised my foot like a, like a hand. Well, they're way less hairy than mine. Like, mine have like a line of hair no, like, right but, up to the big toe. But that's the thing, in terms of the realm of possibility. There's probably some people out there that just love Bigfoot ass looking feet. Like, just, I mean, yeah. Like, just Sasquatch looking feet. Like, probably there's like one guy out there who would be paying millions for that. Yeah, and when I was a kid, man, like, Mort, like, he... they were in this... <laughs> I just wanted a piece Dude, of Mort... Percy's ass, you feel me? <laughs> I, just I just wanted, wanted a piece, piece of... of King Julian's <laughs> ass, you feel me? <laughs> I just wanted a piece of Maurice's ass, you feel me? <laughs> Mort, do not be touching the royal feet. <laughs> he was getting off on that shit, and I didn't even realize oh, it as yeah. a kid. It's just like, haha, feet jokes, but as an adult, I'm like, oh. <laughs> like, was... oh. Who was a show that my... Do oh. not be touching the royal feet. Oh, like my sister was mentioning it before. Like there was a lot of like really racy kind of like adult jokes that kind of flew under the radar when we were watching like a lot of Dan Schneider shit. So like Drake and Josh, Zoe 101. And also, she also mentioned 
Jeanette McCurdy's got a book that she is going to be releasing uh, about her experiences uh, that, you know, she went through and all that. Yeah, my sister brought it up to me before, and I was just like... That was the topic. That was actually the thing when you mentioned Nickelodeon that I was going to bring up to you. She actually even said, my sister, she even said, like, you know, maybe y'all should, like, actually talk about that, considering, like, you know, what the whole, like, at least the implications of, like, her experience are, and even just the implications of, like, her experience as a child star, especially at that point, and, like, just all the abuse. You know what the title is of that book? I know. I'm, I'm aware. David, I'm aware. Please tell the people. You want me to tell the people? Tell the people? Yeah, for all the people in the back, what is the title of the book? I'm glad my mom died. <laughs> Straight up. One of the greatest titles I've ever read for a book. Her mom like, probably forced her into that shit. No, know? no, like, she did. A... She did. And Jeanette no question. got the worst of it too, because for you all to know, this is the, the, the topic I wanted to bring up to Dennis here when he brought him. My gym story can wait, honestly. Um, <laughs> Sorry, yeah, go ahead. No, 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 it's fine, it's fine, whatever. Um, is the the, the the scumminess behind it. Yeah. And I can tell you from working at the American, when, when I were used to work at the American Dream Mall, Nickel- and also being an avid, humongous fan of Nickelodeon All-Star mm-hmm. Brawl, Nickelodeon gives out shit budgets to their outside projects. They don't care. They don't provide it with money and then they get mad when it fails. Like, they are some of the greediest fucking scumbags in the world. Their theme park, their game, like, all that shit. Games! (laughs) But not when it comes to, you know, their public image and silencing people. Because Nickelodeon tried to pay Jeanette McCurdy $300,000. I heard four. Was Was it four? Oh, the number doesn't matter, but it's just kind of like, you know, I just wanted for the facts, Three for facts sake. hundred thousand dollars to not speak out about Dan. She said, go fuck yourself. Three hundred thousand dollars to not say anything about Dan Schneider. Holy fuck. Nickelodeon are fucking scumbags. Oh. Holy but, shit! It's not news. It's no, not no, no. A yeah, new, I was gonna say yeah. thing that Nickelodeon are scumbags. Oh, holy fuck! Yeah, though three hundred. Yeah. Uh, first of all, it should be at least a million. It should nah, be at least a million for you to should, shut her up. It should be even more than that. Like yeah. probably in the tens of millions. I feel because it's like, look, I I think they're also underestimating like how. People seem to like underestimate in general, like how beloved like Jeanette is. That's the thing. Real quick, before I hate to cut you off, but yeah, yeah. real quick, in case you live under a rock, I always forget like just the context of shit. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, just sorry. in case yeah. people don't know, um, if you're living under a rock, Dan Schneider was the creator of a bunch of Nickelodeon shows, uh, their sitcoms, Drake and Josh, beloved, I Carly, honestly. Zoe 101, a bu- Victorious, a bunch of Cat and Sam and Cat, like which was the spinoff of mm. both those shows afterwards. Beloved, yeah, he's a fucking pedophile town, like super supreme yeah. pedo shit. You remember all like the foot jokes that he used to make in the show? Like they were, fo- there, there was just. Pr- protruding his foot fetishes pictures of him like holding the child stars like up and like being in hot tubs with them and stuff like that 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 was the thing they had he had bikini parties with them before they were even of age like yep it is some disgusting shit that like some of the most disgusting shit i've ever read like just flat out robert downey jr actually spoke out against him and straight up oh. called like dan schneider the scummiest person in hollywood iron man came to iron save man. the kids Yo, iron man came to save the kids what... yeah I love Robert Downey Jr. Damn. I mean, and he, and he is. Fuck Dan Schneider. Yeah. Fucking absolute scumbag human being. He's a pedophile. Jeanette McCurdy, got, who played Sam on iCarly, got some of the mm-hmm. worst of it. And what this story is, is that Nickelodeon, they tried to hush money her. They, yeah. they tried to pay her $300,000 to not try to say storm me Dan Schneider. Try to storm me Daniels, Schneider, try to storm Schneider, Daniels sir. Yep. Start, yeah, they tried to storm. The, the, the only Dan that got stormed was Schneider <laughs> himself. Because... Jeanette didn't take it. Motherfucking integrity. She did not mm. take that money. She's like, I'm going to tell fucking everybody about this prick. Just released her book, too, about yep. it. I'm glad my mom died. And it's, like, revealed that sh- revealed the shit about yeah. him. And it's not... Everybody knew... Everybody knows at this point that Dan Schneider was a pedophile. But, like, now, like, she spoke out against him in the book. And I just got to say, Jeanette, Jesus Christ, you are so fucking brave. You are so that- brave, honestly. You, like, you, are, you are honestly an inspiration. Or, like... And just a hero to so many, like, you know, abuse victims everywhere. And, like, that's mm. a machine in Hollywood, man. Yeah. A machine in Hollywood that's so hard to even fight. Impossible to fight damn near even. Especially as a know? child, you know. Even yeah. more impossible being a child, you know. It's like, yeah. 
you because especially like you know in her case her mom was the one that was pushing her to dan like throughout all those years oh, and God. and again like guys like at least in my case i don't know obviously the full story i may go pick up the book i gotta go you know maybe go to barnes and noble maybe i at least like take a quick a uh, couple look at the, some pages and like at least just see some of the stories like uh obviously from her perspective and and i always remember too like years back right Remember the Dan Holder down, she a fighter Schneider like jokes. Yeah, Dan, that, Dan, like, Dan Holder tighter, she's a fighter Schneider. Yeah, yes. Like, I always thought because like this was before at least like I started to really kind of look into it and just like realize like oh this guy actually a pedophile and then it actually comes out no this guy actually really is a pedophile. Yeah. And I always just thought people were always kind of mean to Dan, but now I'm like nope. It was just people speaking facts <laughs> for like five years straight and like everyone kind of just – and like the thing is with me, I give people the benefit of the doubt probably a little bit too much than they deserve in my opinion because like uh-huh. I always just thought like, oh, they're just being mean because people are mean. You know, in- inherently people are mean on the internet. But I was just like, you know, oh, well, I'm the idiot now because it's like, you know, you like – because you could look back at all those shows, right? And you could mm-hmm. tell like which scenes or which episodes he had a big hand in more than others. His and pedophilia, I mean, literally, you watch it grow like as his shows continue. Yeah. Because there's not much foot shit in Drake and Josh, if any. Probably because the, the, they looked older and were older than they actually were as, as were well also, as being dudes. Yeah, exactly. Like he wasn't going to diddle no dudes. Like, yeah, it wasn't when no. iCarly came around that random dancing came around and like and, when they used their feet as like little foot puppets and shit. And, and I also want to bring in just one other bit of discussion about like all those shows. Yeah. I still love Drake and Josh though. Me too. Like I still think, despite being the pedophile that he is, it is probably one of the greatest magnum opuses of a pedophile that I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, this is the greatest it, pedophile work. It, like out of all the shit that he's made, I think it even just goes without saying, like just speaking objectively compared to Drake and Josh, none of the other shows, in my opinion, I've ever laughed that much at like yeah. Zoe 101 was like just, you know, regular Degrassi teen type shit that like, you know, you could just see like wherever, like in any teen Nick show. Yeah, like, uh, Zoe 101 had, like, some drama to it, you yeah, know, and like, Victorious is... Victorious was a good show, but that was when the foot shit started getting real, and that was when Ariana Grande was getting her start as well. That's another that, thing. There was another uh, girl on that show, not Victoria Justice, the, the other... God, the goth one, right? Yeah, which I was like... I, I was like, I like, I don't know why I like you, but you're such a bitch, but I'm... I don't know, look, like, I, I forgot her look, name, but... Dennis, like, you're preaching to the choir on that one. It's talking about like toxic women that you still very much want to get <laughs> like with. You are Azula. preaching to the. No, not e- not even Azula. I'm talking about my actual life. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a story there. Then oh, Dan shit. Holder tighter. She's a fighter Schneider. But um, yeah, Drake and Josh. Yeah, the, like dude, like the fucking scene in like the movie theater is just like they. Ah, oh, dude, I don't want to hang out here. It's like, uh, like dude, I don't want to hang out here, man. What am I gonna do in a movie theater for two hours? <laughs> It just stares at him with the most incredulous fucking face. Well, that's a tough one. My favorite joke from that show. I, I, I know he's a pedophile, but I don't even know if he wrote this joke, but it was the funniest shit. I, I still look at, I look, I look back at this joke every now and then. So when he goes to pick up that fucking package, and this is like this big black dude who's like giving him the package. <laughs> yes! And then like, you know, he's like package for Josh Nichols. It's like, oh, thanks. Have a good day. Don't tell me what you do. And he just goes, <laughs> Dude, of don't all, tell me what to do. Don't tell me what to do. And he just walks away. <laughs> and you know, he even he even mean mugs him as he says it to his face. Yeah. It's like, don't tell me what to do. And he's <laughs> just <laughs> Oh my god. Dude, it is still to this day one of the few jokes that I've seen from my childhood that never fails to get a smile out of me. So fucking funny. The timing of it is just so fucking good. Holy shit. And just the face Josh has afterwards. Dude, that actually, like, I remember seeing that whole joke. I did that once 
to like a shopkeeper. And he was so confused. Like, when they told <laughs> don't tell, him, don't tell me what to do. It was like he was like, "Oh, I'm having a great day," and I'm like, "Don't tell me what to do." I just walked away. <laughs> you just... ate my enchilada. <laughs> yeah, that's what. T- <laughs> uh, Jerry Trainer, that's another great that came yo, from that fucking show. There was yo, do you know there was an episode in that show mm-hmm. where it was it like proved to me like, damn, women can be like manipulative little cunts like it was that one show it was that one episode where it was like one of the earliest ones like drake was going out with a girl the girl Mm -hmm. really liked josh for some reason and she was essentially cheating on drake with josh but josh didn't want none of it because it was just like hey yo like you're my brother's girlfriend but like she was just like drake also didn't believe it because josh yeah (laughs) (laughs) well i'm like yo you people are nursemaid fat guys can get chicks like that's not no question. They just have to have, obviously, like a uh, likable personality. Mm-hmm. Like, but it's just like, how do you think them jigaboos get like they all them like white girls on their dick? Like, they, you gotta like people don't know that. Like, I don't know nothing, man. Just, I don't know nothing about girls on dicks anymore, man. It, it's been <laughs> it's been a long ass time for me, man. My philosophy's towards that, man. Like, fuck. You can reject me all you want, but I gotta say, never. Unless it's, like, a repeated offense, I suppose, yeah. when, like, you just keep on going at it, which, you know. Um, never, don't make a person feel bad for shooting their shot. I did this recently. Um, mm. oh, yeah. uh, I don't know, last last night with a friend of mine who I think is very hot, and I was just very impulsive. Like, very impulsive. I actually had Dennis hype me up to even do it. Like, I wasn't nervous or anything. <laughs> and I will admit, um, she, I was, a, I was a tad crass in one of the things that I said, yeah. which it can be hit or miss. So I don't blame her for being like offended at that. But then she went off on me saying like, you know, like you've done this before. Like, don't shoot your shot with this. Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, like this is disrespecting me. And I'm just like, I totally respect you as a person. I'm just a man and I have needs. Like, I don't feel, I don't feel bad for shooting my shot. I feel bad for the way that I said it because I said it in a very overly flirtatious way. Mm Because she was talking to me about like breaking up with like her man or something like that because she's just like, I just, I don't want to do this anymore. And I'm like, well, if you need help to rebound with anybody, you'd like just let me know or whatever. Like, if Uh you want to, like, yeah, I'm not going to say the exact thing that she said, you know, but she took offense to it big time. And it's like, Mm -hmm. it is what it is if she doesn't want to talk to me anymore or for a while or whatever the situation is, at least with that. But I got to say, don't make someone feel bad, unless it's a repeated offense, which again, totally different story. Don't make Mm -hmm. someone feel bad for shooting their shot. You know what I did yesterday or this morning? What'd you do? With, you want to know what I did? What'd you do? What'd I do? With no words, absolutely no caption towards the tweet. Mm-hmm. I tweeted that gif from that episode of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air when Carlton is playing the basketball game with Will and like the it's like the buzzer beater for the school high school game for Bel Air <laughs> and he takes it the most unnecessary half court shot you've ever seen in your life and the entire time he's looking up at the shot like this Dennis you know he's looking at the ball like like, the most wide-eyed expression, just like, yeah, make it. And he hits the fucking wall, like, like <laughs> five feet away from the fucking basket. Like, yards and yards away from it. And people on Twitter, they knew what I meant. <laughs> they knew what happened to me. They knew what went down. There's no context uh, whatsoever, huh? Literally no context. And I just left a reply tweet. Like, she tried to make me feel, like, bad about it, too. Or whatever. And then, On like, the were... tweet? No, like, no, 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 no. I replied to I replied to the own tweet by saying like, "Oh, she tried to make me like feel like shitty about it too." Like, like she didn't just say no. Like she went off on me as to like why yeah, like yeah. I was a shitty person for even asking or what have you. And that's the tweet that people were liking as well because they knew, they, they knew, they knew immediately. That's the thing, man. Fuck. Like I, it, it, it's it's bothered me today. I woke up with a splitting headache, and as a result of trying to engage with somebody, I had a fucking dream about like my ex last night and shit. It's like all sorts of bad things that happened to my brain to like get in that bad, awful headspace. You know, just from mm. actually being active and stuff like engaging with a woman. Here's my fucking philosophy, right? It pisses me off in the sense of like, and my ex actually felt the same way about it when I was with her, right? Because me and her were friends for three years. Mm-hmm. Three years before we got together. Three fucking years. You know, before I just woke up one day and realized I was in love with her. And, um, 
fucking I I hate the unspoken rule that you can't date your friends. I've gone off on this on the podcast before, but like, I have my own opinions on. No, I, 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 please do because like I agree, it can get messy. Like if it's a workplace environment, because like mm-hmm. my my boss was actually telling me about a situation where she had to fire somebody who was having like mental breakdowns because like mm-hmm. she, he dated someone in the office, they broke up with him, dated somebody else in the office, and like he just couldn't come to work to even see her. And I'm like, okay, that ruins the fucking vibe for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> like that's not okay. If you got to yeah, sign you're a piece one of, those, of shit like, from doing that, yeah. yeah, you got to sign one of those weird dating forms or whatever that doesn't guarantee that shit's not gonna get rocky there's only so much a fucking hr rep whose job is to like protect the company can yeah. do about like fuck shit happening in the office there's only so even much he can fuck, do or even fucking like fucking there's only in so, the office there's only so much they could possibly do in that uh context yeah like just toby flenderson walks into the closet sees people fucking she's like oh, come on guys really like, what are you gonna do <laughs> what are you gonna fucking do man <laughs> fucking pussy you gonna see you can't do shit <laughs> Okay. Stand there and watch with your fucking cock in your hand, asshole. Um, my... Anyway. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Like... Uh, no, no, no. I just... My philosophy is, and I'll let you take it from there, mm. is that... <sighs> say it, say I, it, say I, it. I feel like Disney mind-fucked a whole generation. Of Which just... era? Uh, late millennials, Gen Z. Yeah. Yeah, I could In the that. sense that, like... You know, and all those stories, and, like, as much as they try to appeal, like, to, you know, Gen Zers now by making princesses more independent, like, how they painfully and, like, incredulously and shamefully and very, like, awkward, well, not the word awkwardly, just a shittily try to, like, appeal to feminists <laughs> now and shit, um, by making the princess a strong woman now who don't need no man. It, but, like, the yeah. thing is, you don't fucking... You don't first fucking... Of all, first of all, like, in, in cartoons, like, you know, in, like, TV shows, like, it's always a running gag how somebody, like, one character who's usually a man will repeatedly try to get with the same girl and they play it off like mm-hmm. a joke even though she's annoyed by it. Yeah, in real life, not as funny. I can tell you firsthand no, that doesn't hell fucking... No, no, no. Doesn't fucking work. That actually bothers them a lot fucking and more. And it's cringe as fuck when you're, and like, the is... third person, like, looking yeah. at it. It's disgusting, honestly. Yeah. In you real life, chop that... your dick off. That will make women hate you. It's not fucking funny in real life. But Disney preaches this whole thing of like fairy tales where you meet somebody, in, you fall in love, you you run away into the sunset, whatever. And I feel like everybody just feels like they can only date people they just meet. And I hate that. Because for me, I feel like a friendship to really get to know somebody takes time to blossom. Why do you want to be committed to somebody already when you don't know what they're really like yet? Yeah, you constantly learn about each other. Like, you know, even if you're married, you learn something new about them all the time. But you don't want to be committed to, like, a fucking stranger. Like I said, my ex, you know, as horrible as that relationship ended, it was the best relationship I ever had. It's because we were fucking friends for, like, three until years. Until the next one. It's going to be better. Until the next one. Which, which is going to be, be better. Better, thanks, man. Which is going to be better, pre- man. I appreciate Thank you, Dennis. I appreciate that. Point is, I'm Because I was in a terrible one, too, man. Yeah. For six fucking years. Mm-hmm. I was in a fucking terrible ass one, and it took me a long time to realize, man. But, and I thought too. Look, we all got our rose tinted glasses when it comes to certain shit. We all think, oh, where we're at right now, it's like, oh, it can't get any better than this. No, trust me. No, I, I, I'm it, it gonna, it gonna, it gonna. Dude, trust me. I think back on it, and as much as I miss a lot of those times, I still cringe. You know, because like it, myself, for how much of an <laughs> for how much of an idiot I was, you know, considering yeah, yeah. the context of it and whatnot, you just everybody wants to slap the shit out of their former selves. But the point is, <laughs> why is that forbidden? If people like each other or whatever, because like, wait, oh, wait. you're gonna mess up the friendship or whatever, and it's like S- specify it a little more. Like my point is, is that like I feel like a lot of people like feel like you can only like people expect to find true love on Tinder. Or, like, you know, like, whoever the fuck they grinded on at a nightclub while they're fucking goddamn shit-faced as hell to the point where they can't even remember their goddamn birthday and that's supposed to be the person you spend the rest of your life with. I feel like a lot of people look for love in the wrong places and then wonder why nothing blossoms from it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. When a lot of the times what's ha- what's happening there is right there. And I'm not saying that for my context, being like, that. I'm not saying that, like, in an incel kind of way, but like, and that's why she should have fucked me. Like, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm saying that because the best relationship of my life is with a woman who I was friends with for years yeah. beforehand. And someone that, you know, we slowly learned we were just one of the same kind, that we were a lot like each other in that way. Where like, mm -hmm. you look in each other's eyes and you feel like you're looking in a mirror, you know what I mean? I'm not, like, again, I'm not saying that in, like, a, like this is why, like, my hot friends should fuck me kind of way. Like, if you're not attracted to somebody, you're not attracted to somebody. You gotta learn how to take rejection, learn how to take a no. Yeah. You know, that's, that's important, you know? Learn to take your ball and go home. Yeah, you could shoot your shot, which I did, and you shouldn't feel ashamed for shooting your shot. You should feel ashamed for shooting your shot a million times. Yeah. With, with, like, with the same person. <laughs> but here's the thing, though, too. Now, TV idolizes that, and it's like, but, no, because they usually wind up together at the end of those shows. And that's not how it goes down but, in real but life, ever. But, but that's the thing, though, too. Even shows way back when, and even movies way back when, persistence was found to be sexy. Like, yeah. Like, that was, like, for them, it's like, that's how you get a girl. You be persistent. You keep going. Like, you know, like, don't, don't push too much, but just keep going. Like, just whittle them down a little bit is, like, usually how it, like, the whole train of thought was. Mm -hmm. Now you do that, and at one point, the girl is just going to call you, like, a rapist. And then after that, it's like, okay, well, now I can't, like, it's just, like, fucking done at that point. Like, yeah. you can't even be persistent even in that way <clears throat> in the year of our lord 2022 like you just you just can't do it yeah and like i wouldn't even say that it's due to disney movies i think it's just movies overall that came out over the last like four years that like really have warped like they pussified men for one the last four years of a lot of movies especially even like disney movies like Shang, can you imagine if Shang, how he would be like in 2022? He would be the most beta ass fucking character in <laughs> all of 2002, 2022's like Mulan. And the thing was, was that he was already strong in the first movie. And Mulan was also strong. It's the reason why they complemented each other together so well. Now we have, let's say, a modern version where Shang is a fucking beta Captain of the army, but apparently a beta? Okay, yeah. I, I totally see it. And now, it's like, again, we even said it before, Dave. It is almost seen as a crime now to just be a dude in this day and age. And to people who believe in that shit, I say go fuck yourselves. Because there's plenty of shit that should be celebrated about being a guy. I'm not saying we need a parade or whatever, but I'm just saying that, like, there's plenty of shit that we do that, yeah, I think should be celebrated. Like, and I think it all even boils down to certain things that it's, it goes between, it goes both ways between a guy and a girl in terms of sacrifice. Look, honest to God. Killing the cockroaches. Killing the cockroaches. You're, you're welcome. Working on a fucking oil rig. Out in the middle of the ocean to make sure your fat ass has a couch and a bed to sleep on and a I, TV to watch. I want to shut the fuck up, woman. <laughs> I was down in the bloody mines for 12 hours. Like, bro, the jobs that Shout we do. Shout out to Smiling Friends. Can you even ever imagine a woman working in a fucking steel mill? No, that does not exist. I don't think it really does. Because here's the thing. To. No, but here's the thing. Like, no woman. I, if you ever meet one, please let me know. Because it's like it's not one of those jobs. Because that I like, want her to step on me. Because it's like it's not one of those. <laughs> it's not one of those jobs that people advertise to women. Like they're not telling women, "Oh yeah, come to the steel mill," as if it's like. World War II again, where, like, all the women were out in the factories making planes and bombs, like, thing for the troops, like, thing over in Europe. No. Yeah. It's, it's not that kind of time. And <clears throat> I'll even say this, like, it's, I even, you know, going back to it again, like, and uh, Gene, you, you're, like, my homie now. Because, like, you know, like, you, I don't know, anyone who leaves a comment, like, I, I, I love you automatically. Like, <laughs> and if you want me to spread the love more, please comment more. Thank you. But, um. Like, especially if it's like vitriolic, <laughs> especially if you like call like Dennis I, like racial slurs and shit. I would love you so much 
if you called me a coin slotted cunt. Like, yo, stop giving David Corona through like the voice call, you fucking <laughs> like, <laughs> shitter. Piece of shit. You go back to your country, you fucking communist. Like, you know, I would love stuff like that. And then yeah. the fucking U- YouTube gets like intervened. It's like we've been seeing a we've been, we've been seeing a, a major uptick of racist comments in this in this comment section. It's just like. It's like, fuck you, YouTube, piece of shit, fucking beep, 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 beep. It becomes like a whole, like, you know, Trump ordeal, you know, where, like, they're like, we're the ones who instigated it. But then, like, you have to, like, it's, like, being investigated. Which, by the way, did you hear about that? Oh, no, no, I heard, but let me just, let me just say this. Please, please, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Like. I thought, I thought that would be a very good segue, but it's okay. Continue. I said it before, like, it's the reason why, like, dating for us, like, for dudes, like, David, you're going to meet him. No, nope, it's fucking hard now. Like, you're going to meet a girl. It's hard as shit now. I hate I know, I know. it here, man. I hate I know, I, it here. I know, I know, I know, I know. But you're going to meet a girl. Don't worry about it. You're going to meet one. But the thing is, like, our offspring, bro, it's going to be. I, I mentioned it before, guys. It's going to be a million times harder. I don't even think they're going to talk to each other. No, because you know why? It's always just going to be through Instagram DMs, Twitter DMs, uh, maybe Facebook if that fucking thing is still around. The meta is going to revolve around it even more so than it already does. And I feel like it's part of why my autistic ass brain doesn't click with it because I'm a salesman. I don't know how to go with it. When I'm a salesman, I don't know how to get rid of commission breath is the thing. I can try to do it. I know my script and I know like the right thing to say to people, but I always try to do the job the right way rather than trying to find something to authentically connect with the person about to make it better. And I've gotten a lot better at that just through more experience. And it'll be the same way with women, but like commission breath, it's the same thing as, like, pussy breath. Yeah. Like, when I talk to a girl that I don't know, that's a complete and total stranger, that it's already hard enough to find something to authentically, you know, talk to them about, besides, like, complimenting mm. them, I guess, which already sets the fucking flame off in a woman's head. I have a boyfriend. Like, okay, maybe I just like your fucking shoes. Or, or Maybe I don't think, maybe I don't think you're hot. Maybe I don't want to fuck you. Maybe or, I just like your fucking shoes. Where'd or, you get them, bitch? I want some shoes. Or they'll even say, like, I have a boyfriend. Like, I, I don't know. Like, we're fighting a lot. <laughs> and, gonna, and a husband. <laughs> and it's like, I'm, I'm probably going to cheat on him. I'm going to be going back to be a slut. Like, you know. But you know, I still have a boyfriend, so don't talk to me. It's like, bitch, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> you. How are you going to flip that back on me? <laughs> like, as if you already aren't going to be cheating on his ass. There's just so many mind games now. And I'm not trying to make this show sound like a fucking alpha podcast. Even though my voice just comes <laughs> off very... <laughs> Ch- Chattington like I actually asked on Twitter recently what people who like my voice reminds me of people and everybody said Johnny Bravo and Joe Swanson I was gonna so say Bradley you. I was gonna say Bradley T. Uppercrust <laughs> who's that it's from Goofy uh the extreme Goofy oh movie. yeah <laughs> I forgot like, uh, it's go- oh, Bradley fuck- T. Uppercrust <laughs> fucking uppity fucking rich boy white college fucking prick I like that character the, was perfect the third that <laughs> name Bradley Uppercrust <laughs> that name is just so like I don't know who wrote that name. Fucking perfect. Yeah, fucking humongous fancy sun vibes. So like, fucking huge, great. Right? <laughs> All ashore to my private island. We'll take my private boat on my private jet to my private island. <laughs> you can all take turns sucking my private dick. <laughs> 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 Shout out to Squilio, man. He was actually a, such a fucking goaded character. <laughs> he honestly was. He was and such he, a one joke character, but he was so b- funny. But they used him so well. That's the thing. Exactly. Like, yeah. Every time he showed him. up, every time he showed up was either one meme worthy, and a like a, an episode uh, that you remember. Like every single time he showed up. I but, hope you bring lots of ibuprofen. <laughs> But and just to wrap up my thoughts on that, it's like the entitlement goes both ways, honestly. Yeah. And I think even but in the case of like, let's say, like in the women's camp, it's really twisted in a way where it's like, look, now, like back in the day, right? Getting yep. a guy, at least for them, was like the objective for your mm-hmm. life. I mean, I mean, I know, like, obviously, it's changed a lot now. But, like, going back then, it's like, yeah, that was, like, the objective. Like, getting a nice man and then becoming husband and wife and then making kids. That mm. was, like, the uh, old goal nowadays. Now the new goal 
And here's the thing. People think that, that the new goal has changed. I'll say this. It has not changed. When in fact, I think it's even become more confusing for them going into adulthood. Because, you know, all this women empowerment and stuff like that. Like, you know, obviously mm-hmm. people from a glance, it should be seen as a positive thing. And I think within limits, it is. But it got to a certain extent now where it's like there is no breaks to it. It's just gas, 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 no matter what. You could be the most toxic bitch in the fucking world. And that shit apparently is celebrated. <laughs> like, Beyond that. Yeah, go go on, go on. Yeah, like, and it's just like it almost seems as if there's no stopping it. Because it's continuously celebrated every single year. Like, bro, even just looking at some of the singers and, like, musicians and artists that, like, females that we used to celebrate, right? Yeah. Like, Janet Jackson. Fucking hell. Even Celine Dion. Not that they were, like, all picture perfect and everything, but at least the stuff that they sang about was just finding happiness, right? Yeah. Now we got people like Cardi B... And a bunch of others who are not exactly the most like. Out- brag about raping a dude, by the way. Yeah, exactly. Like that kind of shit. It's like, yeah, you have people who literally brag about raping a dude. And that person is celebrated across the fucking world, apparently. And I'll even draw an equivalent to a guy. Takashi69. This guy snitched out on all of his peeps. Like, and all that shit too. Like Watching the and- side talk videos about him were fucking Bro. hilarious. Every, I'm not gonna lie. Like it is insane. They're like, yo, come back to, come back, come back to, come back to New York, six nine. Come back to New York. Watch what happens. It is insane how snitches, terrible people in general, are celebrated nowadays. It's the reason why that I'm gonna say Drake this right when now. he fucking made out with a 15 year old girl on stage at his concert. It is. I, I'll never forget that. It I will is never forget that shit. So fucked that these are the people that a lot of like generations a little bit before us me and david yeah. are celebrating now these are the ideals and morals and values that people are celebrating you know the baby right you know the let's go like, you know, <laughs> let's fucking go me. You, know, you know what he did you know what he did Didn't he, he just shot say a, a bunch dude of homopho- what? Oh, he what shot going? a dude in a walmart in broad daylight and the guy was never jailed guy would never went into jail he didn't even get charges pressed on nothing this guy shot a guy in a Walmart in broad daylight, nothing happened to him. Really? Absolutely nothing happened to him. It was some gang war shit. But oh. like apparently the people didn't get turned off by that at all. It was real hood like, shit, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, they were just like, like, Yeah, yeah, he probably deserved to get shot and stuff like shit like that. He probably started shit. People had no idea why. Some a lot of people actually don't know why he shot him. They just know that he did and then it's almost celebrated. Mm. I don't see nobody ever saying like like if it's even weird. Like even Chris Brown. Whose music I don't even listen to, right? Everyone knows that he beat Rihanna. Like, that was, like, the news of the century when that came out. Yep. And the guy still fucking, like, got people, like, you know, Not uh, only cheering that. him on in concerts. Not only that, if you bring it up at any point saying, why do people still like this guy? They will all collectively clown on you. Yeah. They'll clown on you for it. Be like, why are you bringing up old shit? Why are you bringing up old shit? Like, yeah, he still beat a woman damn near to death and got away with it. I, I don't care if that happened, like, 10 years ago, 5 years ago, fucking 15, 20 years I don't give a fuck. He's a piece of shit. Yeah. Like, but no, like, it's been long enough of a time for, like, these fucking, like, time lapse to, like... Like, what, what is, what is, um... What, what is that law that happens? Like, statue of limitations, like, yeah, goes yeah. off in these people's heads. People, some people's statue of limitations for people nowadays, for celebrities who do heinous shit, is, like, 5 minutes. Like, that's, <laughs> that's their statue of limitations. Like, oh, man, it just came out that... Just came out it's that so turned true, out yeah. Danny DeVito fucking not to use this. Actually, I don't even want to use DeVito as an example because if that happened, <laughs> I'd fucking kill myself. Um, who's who's another who's another really shitty? Uh, let, let me just name another. Um, Kevin Spacey. That's because Kevin Spacey. Oh yeah, he raped seventeen more people in the UK where he's living now. <laughs> Guess what? He probably actually did. That's probably not even that much of an exaggeration. Yeah. But that actually, Kevin Spacey's not a good example. He doesn't have as many fucking you know cult followers mm. nobody defends kevin space point Cosby? is is that like no not Bill. Uh, musicians really it's celebrity oh oh perfect one travis scott 
Travis Scott, Ooh, perfect example. Yeah. You know, when like all those people were dying at his concert and he made that apology video where he's rubbing his face and literally didn't ever utter the words, I'm sorry, in the video. Like, yo, I can't believe. Like, just look, he just rolled out of bed. Like, <laughs> yeah. can't, can't believe this happened. This is bad. Yo, hearts <laughs> go out to all the... Oh, let's go out to all the victims. Oh, whatever. Man, That's Charlie, literally what the video was like. Did, did Charlie put his video? Char on Charlie the made a video on the apology video. He it's like the worst <laughs> apology video ever. <laughs> Anyways, that's about it. See ya. <laughs> Point, uh, dude. I don't, we're it, it, dude, we're low key fucked in the next ten years. <laughs> Honestly, we're low key fucked, man. Like, I, I know, like, I've said this to so many people, like, within my circle, like, my family and friends, but, like, bro, like, if this is where we're at now, it's just a downward spiral at this point. If people who are literally shooting each other at broad daylight and gets away with it, and people say, like, oh, I, I see nothing wrong with this, dude, it's just, what else are you gonna let them get away with at that yeah. point? It's not a and, matter of, yeah. And it's just, like, apparently, like, this is like and also another reason like i think it's like a big problem that i think I, most people have is that like yeah you don't want like they don't want to focus like on the bad at all even they want to pretend as if it don't even exist they want to pretend as if like oh no not our sweet da baby not our sweet takashi 69 not our sweet cardi b no no, they've done nothing wrong. Or at the very least, like, they know they did something wrong, but they, like, train their brains. Like, they train their minds to, like, just block it out. Almost as if, like, it never happened, like, in their universe. Some people are and just fucked that way, man. My ex was the same way. You want so badly to believe that somebody is the way you perceive them in their mind rather than who they actually are, that you'll play any sort of mental gymnastics just to fucking get around it and fit your own narrative because you just want to believe so badly that they're like a good person that they're who you want mm -hmm. them to be that they like oh i met my met my hero don't meet your heroes whatever when they're mm -hmm. just fucking not and, yeah. th and that that's happened before you know that happened with people that i knew that i liked in the fucking smash scene you know what i mean mm -hmm. that, that happened and then you met them and and then you hated them afterwards no not that i met them they turned out to be fucking pedophiles <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> when, when that shit when that shit was going down so like the mental gymnastics that people will play man it's like in the, the music industry has them just so deeply by the balls as well like with their instant excuse gratification. me jesus christ yeah, you got that's one you got to blow away so it doesn't go back up into your nose i know that's why i was just that's why like i went away from the mic even though i'm not even right next to you i'm like we're like literally miles apart from each other and i'm just kind of like <laughs> blowing my burp away <laughs> Beyond shuffling your cards at your desk, I'm glad that another thing that we also do together is what you just did right there and blowing away your burps. Uh, I do that all the time, man. Yeah, yeah. I too. think it's just courtesy. No, it's also good because then the burp fumes go back up into your nose a lot of the times, and that was, that's what causes like gas builds up build ups in your chest. So that's why I always go like like I'm like smoking a like a burp cigarette. I'm like <laughs> <laughs> just like blowing it out. Blue. I, I need to ask this for confirmation from you, especially because like I do consider your opinion to be like pretty important do you agree like we're kind of fucked right in 10 years like the generation after us are kind of fucked aren't they as far as dating goes which is what this correlates back to i want to say yes because like you know it, it's not just disney films it's our phones that make us like you know our social skills just way worse uh thank you for bringing this back up because i'm gonna round it up i think it's a fucking miracle that anybody is getting together nowadays in this day and age at all in that way it's so much harder because there's so many unwritten rules because of how things change it's just like more yeah, unwritten told, rules you, you're told ones. to shoot your shot but you can't shoot your shot with your friends or you can't shoot it with a coworker. you have to do it with somebody you just met oh slow the fuck down you just met this person you mm -hmm. can't go that fast already you gotta wait a couple of days or whatever nah nah it's been a couple days and she didn't reply to the text within this amount of time, so that's not going to count. You have to wait a couple of days and only take her to this kind of restaurant. Just like... Ah, just fucking be like straightforward with it, man. That's all I know how to do. That is why I asked my hot friend last night, who was like talking about how like she wanted to be like just going around fucking people again and offered myself to her in that way. I don't think I'm a bad guy for that. Am I a bad guy for the way I phrased it? Yeah, I was crude. I, I said something about like you know like if you want to like ever break your pussy off like on something like you know feel free to go and do that on me. And I'm like, okay, that was crude. If like you if you didn't take it that kind of way, I totally get it. But. I don't regret fucking trying to, you know, shooting my shot. I don't regret... I'm not a bad person for doing that. But now it's portrayed that you are in that kind of way. Dennis, 
It's like, the, I I hate being single so much. You're expected to find love, like, just by browsing through, like, apps solely mm. based on someone's looks, which is not how you get to know a person, who they actually are, you know, the actual reasons, like, their intricacies, mm. their mindset, who they are, the kind of things that make you want to actually be with somebody. You're expected to find somebody like that on Tinder or Bumble browsing through, or like I mentioned earlier, somebody that you drunkenly were grinding up on at a club that you could barely hear yourself in and were so goddamn shit-faced that you couldn't remember your name at the time mm. it's like this is the kind of stuff that we base like love in now this is why i i think it's so stupid that people say you can't fucking date your friends the people who are tangible the people who are actually in your life the ones that you can actually fucking see you know what i mean mm. that you actually have bonds and connections with i'm not saying you should always go for your friends but if they're the ones that you have a bond <laughs> with have that connection with you know what i mean then by all means why is that off limits just because you're too scared to fucking ruin the friendship dennis yeah. You you you, you want to hear something real quick? Go ahead. One this this is a real I'm going to preface this is a real statistic. By the way, you're all welcome to look this up after you hear this. 1 in 4. 1 in fucking 4 American men below the age of 30 now are virgins. 1 in four. You know what that means, Dennis? If we had two other dudes in this podcast with us, <laughs> it one means of one has, of them has never had sex. One of them never got their dick touch. Even once. Or it's one of us, and one of us has just been lying profusely <laughs> to each other. <laughs> like, for just years and years and years at this point. Like, yeah, man, like, oh, yo, dude, yeah, what does a pussy feel like, man? Like, oh, it feels so good. It's, like, ice cold. It's, like, an air conditioner on your dick. <laughs> it, it feels so good, bro. Like, it was, like, oh, a, it was, like, blowing good air. Bro, it literally feels like you're fucking a mashed potato. It kind of does if it's right out of the oven. <laughs> if it's but right cold, out of the oven. No, no, but it's cold. Oh, but it, oh, it feels like you're fucking a cold potato, bro. <laughs> Shoutouts to American Pie, which actually did make the best analogy, that it feels like you are like you stick your dick in the center of a hot apple pie that just came out of the oven. That is actually kind of what pussy feels like. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. All yeah, right. and then and then he fuck, then he takes the pie out of the oven and he starts Bro. fucking it and his dad walks in. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'm gonna just say this, and we're gonna wrap it up here. Yeah. I think, honestly, it's gonna always gonna boil down to this. If this trend continues with, like, females... <laughs> don't, don't call them females. That's <laughs> actual, like, alpha male podcast shit. Females. Here's the fucking problem with females. 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 <laughs> That's so fucking weird. Stop saying females. that. Females. Please just say slurs again instead. Cunts. Okay. Uh, like, here's the. Like, I'm actually I'm more say... comfortable with you saying cunts <laughs> than females. <laughs> I'm gonna not gonna this... lie. I actually am. I'm just gonna say this one last thing. I, if. If this trend continues for the next, like, ten years. Because here's the thing. We're very simple, man. We want two things out of a woman. It's either sex or a relationship. I said this before. It's either two things. And we're very simple in that regard. We either just want something completely entirely physical. Or we want both. Which is relationship and also sex. We're very simple in that regard. Yeah. And young female. Especially around like their young and stupid phase, like we're talking twenty one to like maybe twenty seven. Honestly, like, look, I'll even say this and just draw like extend an olive branch here. I'll even admit I have no idea what I wanted by twenty one to like I guess like twenty seven. I had no idea right. what I wanted in that age. I was young, aimless. It like it. it that whole aspect goes both ways, but. In this day and age now, the ones who hold all the cards in the dating game, all the cards apparently, are females. And I will because, say that they do have all the control. They're because, all the power, at least. And, the, and because of that, when it comes to and, dating and shit, and the entitlement that they also have, and also just like you know, saying this just as like an explanation, I guess, like they're goofy bitches, man. And, like, they just get goofier and goofier as, like, the fucking years go on. The younger they are, like, usually, like, it's just, you know, they get older and wiser as they grow up. And it's the same for us guys. We get older and wiser. We know, like, what exactly what we want the older we get. 
maybe most of the time i don't know <laughs> but like uh at least you know you get to a certain age and like you actually have a let's say a better idea of what you want right and mm-hmm. i honestly feel like you know going back to it it's like if they continue to have hold all the cards like they are now bro we're fucked we're fucked the dating game is already fucked it's fucked man and it's not getting any easier i'll tell you that much it's really not i i hate being single so much i will not lie to you it's it's fucking difficult out here man which is why most of the time like as sad as it is i don't really try i'm like a vol cell like a voluntarily well no that's not true (laughs) what the fuck is that a voluntarily celibate man no that's that's like that's like gandhi never mind I thought you were about to call yourself like some scientific term, like it was supposed to be another word for amoeba or something. <laughs> like ambivert. I was like so confused. I was like, why is he calling himself a science word? Yeah, and like again, I'm not an incel. Like if somebody does, like you're not attracted to everyone either, right? Like you got to learn how to take rejection. It's but I don't feel bad for shooting my shot. You can't tell mm-hmm. me that I'm a bad person for that. But at the same fucking time, it's like I also agree, man. It's just like it's so. I'm going to leave on this, and this is something that I actually tweeted today before we uh, do wind up over an hour again. It drives me nuts. This is our this is our concluding thoughts, like last words with John Oliver. Like, uh, we're going to have let, let them have the last word tonight. It drives me nuts how American culture, and I think this is a huge underlying factor. I think well. Western culture in general. Western culture, it drives me nuts how American culture is simultaneously being obsessed with sex. While easily being one of the most sexually repressed societies in the world. Seriously, so many powerful shows, powerful quote unquote, on expensive ass streaming services now. You, I, I've noticed this in watching these commercials. Mm-hmm. They always have two women going at it. There's always a brief snippet of two women <laughs> about to kiss. Two women going at it. Because who doesn't like that shit, right? Men like it. Women low-key like it. You know, it's also amazing. Blah, blah, blah. But IRL, the amount of men below the age of 30 that are virgins or are not having sex has tripled in the last decades. In the last decade. We and that shit's glorify, celebrated too. <laughs> we glorify sex so much in media, but in real life, it's so bastardized now to the point where if you yeah. say anything inappropriate or you ask your friend who is very, you know, like sexually forward and is literally talking about how she wants to start fucking guys again and stuff outside of her relationship, you are the bad guy. That's the thing. You are a bad guy. Keyword guy. By association. Because you're a guy. You bad. You're automatically like the villain. I don't know. I feel like other another woman would have been nicer to me. But like low-key. Like I know what she is. She's kind of a game player. And I'm well aware that she is. But that's my own fault for involving myself. Uh, she, you know with someone like that. She also goofy though bro. She young. She young and stupid. Yeah. You it, know she's. Like, we were young and stupid too. I'm not saying of course, that. Of course. She, of course. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm not even saying that it's just her and it's only women her age. Like, we were all young and stupid before. It's just, I'm saying that, like, again, like, people also, it's so weird. People celebrate being young and stupid. I don't, like, I don't understand well, what it is. You need to but... have your young and stupid no, years. No, no, no. And then in no, your no. 30s, you but... get somebody. Dennis, 59 sec, 59. <laughs> Mental illness is not something that should be fucking celebrated in the year of our Lord 2022. Anyway, all right, bye. Yes, <laughs> but, I also, but I also don't blame them for being young because most relationships. No, not, neither am I. Most relationships that start when you're in your 20s fucking fail. You should oh, not yeah. do long term until you're like in your mine 30s. did. My or, my sh- my shit crashed like the Hindenburg, bro. So <laughs> it crashed and burned like the Hindenburg. All right, and if you don't want your brain to crash and burn like the Hindenburg, you can check out the Double D Experience every. Oh, I got it, I got it. You can check out the Double D Experience every single Friday at eight uh, at noon, actually at uh, noon currently. Uh, follow it at Double D Pod. Uh, on Twitter at the Double D Experience Twenty One on Instagram, and you can listen to it wherever you get your podcasts: Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and also right here at youtubecom Nintunas. Please like, comment, and subscribe. All that good shit. We are done. Dennis, last word before it hits an hour. I fucking hate women. Bye, guys. We're leaving. <laughs> I love them, and that's why I hate myself. I fucking hate females, bro. <laughs> God. Fuck. Fucking hate females. <laughs>